Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. A state court rules that a Christian school must now hire a married homosexual man. A Harvard doctor loses hospital privileges for speaking the truth. And Cincinnati bans Bible quoting during counseling. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. A state court in Massachusetts has now ruled that a Christian, specifically a Catholic school, must hire a homosexual man who says that he is married to another homosexual man. And the Catholic school's gotta hire him? National Review reports that a state court in Massachusetts has ruled that a Catholic preparatory school violated the state's anti-discrimination law when it offered, but then rescinded the offer, a job offer to a man because he was married to another man. And he admitted this on his job application. Matthew Barrett had initially accepted a job as food services director at the Fontbon Academy, a Catholic girls school near Boston, Massachusetts. But on his employment forums, he listed his husband as his emergency contact, a move that led some in the Catholic school to question whether or not he believed in traditional Catholic religious beliefs. And when they concluded, obviously he did not, they rescinded his job offer, so he sued. The court's reasoning was absurd, rejecting the school's expressive association argument in part because the school was free, the court claimed, for now anyway, to explain that hiring Barrett was merely involuntary compliance with civil law. And by that standard, expressive association becomes meaningless. So in other words, the Catholics are free to continue to espouse their belief that homosexuality is a sin. And when somebody questions that and says, well, why'd you hire that guy? They can say, oh, we didn't want to, but we had to because that's the, that's the law. And therefore they're allowed to remain pure in their Roman Catholic beliefs. And yet they're doing the opposite of what they profess. That's the problem <laughs> with that argument is that they appear as hypocrites, unwilling to stand up for God Instead, they're being bullied and they accept this bullying by the state law. After all, if a court can jam Christian employers with employees who do not share their religious values and then contend that the employer's rights are protected and they're still free to complain about it, even though they have to hire these people, they can complain about it, so that gives them freedom. Well, then the floodgates are open, according to National Review. Moreover, it's disturbing to see a court substitute its own judgment for a Christian organization's determination of what constitutes a serious burden on their religious expression, which is protected under the Constitution. Even worse, the court held that even if the school could establish a serious burden on its expression, the state had a compelling governmental interest in eliminating so-called discrimination against this homosexual man which effectively crushes the school's First Amendment rights and imposes instead non-discrimination as more important than the First Amendment. Here's a quote from the homosexual man's lawyer, a man named Bennett Klein said the following, quote, since the advent of marriage equality, we have seen efforts by religiously affiliated organizations to expand the grounds for exemptions from the obligation of non-discrimination. The court's ruling affirms that a religious employer has no greater constitutional right to discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation than it does to discriminate on the basis of a person's race or sex." End quote. So that's the lawyer for the homosexual man. Now here's a competing quote from Scott Shackelford of reason.com who wrote the following quote, 
Now that government discrimination is largely tamed, in other words, after the Supreme Court homosexualized marriage, he continues, gay activists are going to, after private behavior. They're using the government as a bludgeon. The Roman Catholic School, Fontban Academy is expected to appeal the state court's decision. Well, that's the news. Our thanks to National Review, a conservative magazine for that informative report. You know, there is a demonic spirit here of persecution against the church. And everyone's been arguing, oh no, they just wanna be left alone in the privacy of your own bedroom. No, that's not what they want anymore. They had that back in 19, or, or 2003, the Supreme Court case, I think in uh, Lawrence versus Texas. They can be left alone in the privacy of their own bedroom. There aren't people going in and knocking down their doors and preventing them from being homosexual, as long as they're consenting adults. What they're doing now is coming after the church. They want the Roman Catholic Church to bow their knee to the state, the homosexual state in this case, of Massachusetts, and they want to say, we're gonna force you to comply with us and worship us as if we are God and you can no longer worship or believe the Bible or Jesus Christ as if Jesus is God, as if God is God. And the God of our Bible obviously condemns homosexuality as a sin. So why would you force a Roman Catholic Church to endorse this? They're coming after us. They don't care about the First Amendment. They don't care about the Constitution. They just want power. And this is not about sexuality anymore, it's about power. And that's a demonic spirit of lust. Not just lust for another man, but lust for power over the Christian people who yearn to breathe free. The Bible says this in Proverbs 17, he who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both of them alike are an abomination to the Lord. Let's pray, would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray for liberty, for freedom from this tyranny of oppression, which is now upon the church of Jesus Christ. Whether it's the Catholic church, the evangelical church, Father, any Bible believing Christian ought to be free to not be forced to participate in somebody else's acts of sodomy. And Father, we pray that you would give us liberty in America and freedom to worship you as our only God. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, a doctor loses his hospital privileges for speaking the truth. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How is your marriage doing? I wanna tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of our ability to have a healthy marriage, but with the way God intended it, he always wanted us to see his view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with Him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important four part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll free prayer line at 866 Obey God. Again, that's 866 O B E Y G O D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You too can have a godly marriage. 
empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. Our next story comes from Liberty Council, who reports that a Harvard-educated doctor with decades in public service in his hospital has now lost his hop hospital privileges because he spoke the truth against the medical problems involved in the lifestyle of homosexuality. Liberty Council reports that Dr. Paul Church, here's a picture of him. He's a highly credentialed doctor, was fired after Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, BIDMC in Boston, Massachusetts, revoked his hospital admission privileges and its board of directors rejected his appeal of that bad decision. Dr. Church raised concerns for medical reasons, not theological reasons, but actually medical reasons for opposing an openly sexually deviant lifestyle to the board's annual promotion of that homosexual conduct. The board had a different view. They were promoting the gay pride parade and many other things, including dangerous behavior against medical advice. So as a member of Harvard's medical staff, Dr. Church had worked at that hospital for 28 years and he wrote the following words in an open letter this past week. On December 8th, 2015, he says, my final appeal battle at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center ended with a judgment by the board of directors to uphold previous decisions and revoke, revoke my appointment as a member of the medical staff after 28 years because I objected to, quote, aggressive institutional endorsement and annual promotion surrounding lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender activities within and without the medical center, including the vulgar Boston Pride Parade to the exclusion of medical facts and traditional values. I have challenged, Dr. Paul Church continues, the medical center to be more truthful and honest about the negative health consequences inherent with high risk and unhealthy sexual behaviors and to be more respectful of the diversity of religious and moral views regarding homosexuality. In presenting medical facts and biblical truths criticizing these policies, my objections were unfortunately characterized as offensive to some members of the hospital community. And this became the focus of repeated investigations and efforts to expel me from the staff. Instead of addressing the merits of the objections and the criticism itself, the hospital became more aggressive about efforts to silence these concerns, even resorting to the creation of a special gag order in 2011 designed to silence my voicing of concerns within the medical center. This past year, a team of Boston lawyers, I almost said liars there, a team of Boston lawyers hired by the medical center accused me, says Dr. Paul Church, of violations of the gag order and hospital bylaws in their case to have my staff appointment revoked. But rather than resign as the hospital initially re requested, I engaged in the internal appeals process with help from my legal team at Liberty Council. Despite an outpouring of public support, the board of directors was unwilling to address the real issues here. And so I end my long affiliation with the hospital with sincere regrets that the administration and directors have departed from the institution's higher mission and calling to follow their highly controversial social agenda. I do value the many personal and professional relationships fostered there over many years. For my part, says Dr. Paul Church, I intend to continue my medical practice elsewhere and will continue to fulfill my responsibility as a doctor by advocating for healthy and moral choices." End quote. Well, that's the news. That's the letter signed by this heroic doctor. We discern upon you, Dr. Paul Church, the Holy Spirit of God for taking a principled stand for people's health, for speaking the truth, even when the politically incorrect culture of Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center wants to promote dangerous and risky behavior, the opposite of health. And by the way, if I were seeking treatment in anywhere in Boston, that's the last hospital I would go to. 
because they promote not only a lack of health in the, through their board of directors decisions, but they also promote risky and dangerous behavior and they also oppose people of faith. They are discriminating now. By firing a doctor for voicing his professional views, not only about traditional values, not only about his preference to personally believe the Bible, but about what is best for his patients, now that doctor has become the enemy of their original mission. And I think they've lost their way and until they change that, I would not recommend anyone ever go to Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. That's my opinion. The Bible says this in Matthew chapter five, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we discern upon this Dr. Paul Church, the spirit of righteousness. Let's pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus name that you will give vindication and victory to this doctor. And Lord, bless him as you have already blessed him, as we already discern within him the spirit of God. Father, you are residing and taking up residence inside of this persecuted doctor and you are displaying your glory to the world. Father, we pray that you would shine his light as an example to everybody in Boston until they see the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is a healing God, who promotes sanity and holiness and physical health. Father, we pray your blessing on all of Dr. Church's patients, that they will receive the truth and therefore they will lead lives that promote their own sanctification and health. Father, we pray this blessing on him. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take another short break. When we come back, Cincinnati has now banned Bible quoting during counseling. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about your family, about your children? Of course you do. But you need to take action today because they're under attack. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org to protect traditional marriage. Here are three specific petitions you can sign. Number one is to stop ENDA. This is the so-called Employment Non-Discrimination Act, but it's actually a bathroom bill that will punish Christians. It's introduced by a homosexual congressman, Jared Polis from Colorado, and it's really just a bathroom bill in disguise. Ladies and little girls, next time you go into the ladies room at any public restaurant, you might run into somebody who looks like this if ENDA becomes law. We need to stop this because here's the actual, actual language of the bill. They don't want you to read this. It says dresser grooming standards must be permitted for any employer who has an employee who's undergoing or may someday go undergo a gender transition after the time of employment. Well, this gives them permission to have the same dress or grooming standards to which they're transitioning. In other words, they don't even need a sex change. A man can go into a ladies room and assault you and your little girl if ENDA becomes law. And they'll punish the Christian business owner if he doesn't allow that. Number two petition you can sign is to stop the Homosexual Classrooms Act. That's being introduced by Senator Al Franken of Minnesota, actually to defund your public school if you don't force the teachers to promote homosexuality to all of the children as, as young as kindergarten in the guise of anti-bullying lectures. You're really just recruiting your kids into the gay agenda. Petition number three you can sign at PrayInJesusName.org is to defend traditional marriage. The 1996 Defense of Marriage Act is under fire, but it defines marriage simply between one man and one woman. Sign these petitions today. Go to PrayInJesusName.org and take action. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Thank you for supporting us when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. The city of Cincinnati, Ohio has now banned certain instances when you're allowed to quote the Bible during private counseling sessions behind closed doors. ChristChurchCincy.com reports that at a meeting of the Cincinnati City Council, both the Law and Public Safety Committee, the city council member, Chris Seelbach, proposed and passed 
the following anti-Christian resolution that, quote, an ordinance that would impose a $200 a day fine on a therapist or counselor practicing the therapy that aims to change lesbians, gay men, bisexuals, or transgender people from their sexual orientation or gender identity, end quote. In other words, you can be fined if you're a therapist or a counselor and you quote the Bible that says that's a sin, you shouldn't ought to do that, you need to change back to the way God intends you to be. You're gonna find Christians for promoting Christian values during private counseling. Well, you've just de-Christianized the entire psychotherapy industry. This new law, city ordinance, was approved despite the broad opposition of almost every voter who attended the meeting, many of whom were pastors. The text of the law applies to, quote, mental health professionals while working with minors, but it also now applies to pastors who are licensed by the government. Why any pastor would want a government license to preach the gospel, I'm, I'm wondering myself, but now apparently even those Christian pastoral licenses can be revoked by the government if they dare to quote the Bible behind closed doors in private counseling. According to the article, it will be likely be done on Wednesday of this past week, and Councilor Seelbach is confident that he had the necessary votes to make it out of committee and to pass it as a law, and in fact, it did pass as a law as of this reporting. Although a few states have passed similar laws, no major city has done so, and Cincinnati is the first, exulting and claiming that they're leading the way in essentially promoting sodomy. The, the law is wicked, according to the blogger that I'm reading here at ChristChurchCincy.com, because it is a denial of biblical doctrine of sanctification. Now it's threatening fines of up to $73,000 per year, or almost the entire salary of any biblical counselor who dares to quote this Bible verse to anyone who is caught in the homosexual lifestyle, that Bible verse is the illegal Bible verse that they don't want you quoting now is 1 Corinthians chapter six, which says the following. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covenants, nor drunkards, nor revilers, extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you but you, the Christians who loved the Lord Jesus, were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God." End quote. So that's the illegal Bible verse that they don't want quoted in Cincinnati. You know what, all you Cincinnati viewers out there, I hope you heard me read that because we'll do it out in the open, not just behind closed doors. But those who dare to quote the Bible behind closed doors or refuse to bow, refuse to bow their knee to the idol of sexual anarchy, the false idol of sexual pleasure, are now being promoted across the land, and Christians who oppose that are forced to pay the price. That's the news. Our thanks to ChristChurchCincy.com for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. There is an evil spirit of sexual immorality which is pervading our country, and they want to recruit not just consenting adults, as may be allowed by law, but they wanna recruit children. And this, this city ordinance was specifically targeted toward children. You can't tell a child that gay is wrong in Cincinnati. You can't tell a child that gay is wrong. In other words, any child who's tempted by, good grief, all of the television programs, you know, the Disney Channel, everywhere that's promoting gay is good, of course, they're welcome to recruit your children, but if you have a counselor, or if you're a parent of a child who's facing these difficult situations, and this child is being tempted by a demonic spirit of lust and sin, you can't tell the child that that's wrong, and if you do tell the child, then you can be fined or lose your license as a pastor. This is the spirit of Antichrist. It's right there in Cincinnati, and I wanna pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray against the spirit of Antichrist, which is rising up among us, even in this particular city council decision. And Father, we 
discern the spirit of evil inside of those counselors who are trying to persecute and prosecute and delicense not just the counselors, but the pastors of Cincinnati. Father, we pray you give them liberty to speak the truth and to heal the children who are confused. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break and I'll have a word to conclude the show. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. How is your marriage doing? Ladies, would you like to learn how to get your husband to love you the way Christ loves the church? Men, would you like your wife to show proper respect? You know, there's a Bible way to have a godly marriage. I'm not saying I'm the expert, but we interview in a four-part video teaching series, a marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage, and also God's plan for divorce. You want to have this important four-part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll-free prayer line at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you for standing with us. We need your contributions to stay on the air and to expand our audience. Help us reach more people with the truth that you're seeing. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could be on a prime time television slot? Well, we need your contributions to do that. Please visit today and give generously at PrayInJesusName.org. I don't take a dime of salary from donations to our nonprofit. Just donate if you can, or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Bible says in Philippians chapter four, God will supply every one of your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for supporting us. We'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.